Hey guys, Scott Rolliter here. I wanted to do a, a quick video to cover a couple different topics. One, Q-tip positioning, and two, different types of equipment. I could talk for quite a while on both things, but I'm gonna try to keep the intro a little bit short. Uh, if you wanna skip ahead, um, I might put a graphic on here when I'm done just to show you where the actual shooting starts. But um, So with Q-tip position, I've had a couple comments locally and a bunch of comments on my YouTube videos asking me to show or discuss uh, how I'm hitting the cue ball. There's obviously a lot of produced uh, DVDs and videos out there where people have a little superimposed cue ball and they kind of show, you know, they're hitting their high right or low left or whatever. So I'm going to do a little bit of that today and kind of discuss it at least and discuss a little bit of the decision making as I go through the racks. But a little caveat with that, um, I'll just say I'm intending to hit the ball with follow and right English. Uh, I, I don't always know exactly when I get down on the ball if I'm going to be using, you know, one full tip of follow and one half tip of right or whether it's going to be more like three quarters tip follow. Uh, I think your subconscious sort of finds that Q-tip position based on subtle differences and based on past experience and, and um, kind of that mental computer we all have, right? So, um, so I'm not going to change it drastically from what I think it's going to be when I get down, but you know, when I say high right, it's not always going to be on the diagonal axis. It might be, you know, that whole one o'clock, two o'clock, somewhere between 1230. You know, it could be any of those types of positions. And it really depends on how I want to blend those two factors. Uh, same thing with a follow shot or a draw shot. You know, when I get down, I may say, okay, I need one full tip of draw. But when I get down, maybe I need one full tip and a quarter. Um, because, you know, I just feel that that blended with the speed I'm going to hit, that's what I need. So, um, the second caveat I'm going to say with that is if you understand the principles of position play, and uh, this is more for the beginning or interme intermediate players, if you understand that you have the tangent line based on a stun shot where the cue ball is neither rolling forward or sliding backward, and you understand that follow bends it forward from that line and draw bends it backward, and when the ball hits the rail, that right English will, you know, make the ball go more to the right and, and more to the left, conversely with left English, and that could result in opening up the angle or narrowing the angle, depending on the orientation of the balls. If you understand that and you're watching a match, you can pretty much tell what the person hit the ball with. You may not know exactly how high or how far right or how low or how far left, but you're going to know they hit high right or low left. And really the amount of that is going to be very dependent on your stroke and your personal preference anyways. Um, there's also a lot of situations where you could maybe perhaps just stun the ball, uh, but, but you also might be able to get to the same place by maybe using a little bit of follow and a little bit of right or left English and rolling the ball instead. So um, anyways, that being said, I'll try to talk through that a little bit as I play. Second thing I want to talk about a little bit is equipment, right? Uh, I could go on and on and on about this, but it drives me a little bit crazy when I hear people talking about, oh, they got this tip and it's the best tip ever. And, uh, oh, hey, I just got this shaft and it's so much more accurate than my old shaft. Um, I hate to like burst anyone's bubble, but the physics and the science just don't support those claims. So it is true that there's different amounts of deflection in the shafts. Deflection is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, in theory, if we could do something like a zero deflection cue, that would be great, but those don't exist. So all of the low deflection shafts out there, they, uh, they serve a purpose. They do minimize um, errors because the range of the deflection is smaller, so therefore it's easier to, to, to target it on the, the proper compensation versus having a wider range of deflection. But just because you have a slightly lower deflection cue than another lower than another low deflection cue does not mean it's inherently you know more accurate for you it's really about tuning your compensations to that shaft um, and and also i see the difference between people talking about well i've got a z shaft or a thinner shaft versus a thicker shaft and how one is more accurate or i get more spin with this or i get more power with this um, I've played with a number of different cues and shafts over my career. I've changed tips a whole bunch of times. I've never had to retool my game because I'm getting more power out of a specific shaft or tip. I've never had to retool my game because all of a sudden I'm spinning the ball more than I was before. 
and I've used everything from an 11.5 millimeter tip all the way up to a full 13 millimeter. And the tip is going to look different on the cue ball. You know, a skinnier tip has a little bit more of that toothpick look to it. A uh, thicker tip may, may make you feel like you can center it a little bit easier. But, you know, center is center. Uh, if I'm trying to put the center of a small object onto the center of a larger object, being the cue ball, center is center. So if you're off by an eighth of an inch, you're off no matter what. Now, technically, if you have a nickel-shaped tip radius, which typically is found on thicker shafts, um, there is a small, and I'm emphasizing small, difference in if you move the tip, let's say an eighth inch off center, because of the lack of roundness of the tip, the part of the tip that's hitting the cue ball might be a little, and I'm saying fractionally closer to the center than if you had a more, a thinner or a more round tip. But the difference is fractional. I mean, we're talking fractions of a millimeter. So yes, in theory, uh, a, a wider shaft with a more of a nickel based profile is going to be slightly more accurate than a thinner or more dime shaped tip. However, for practical purposes, I played with the Z2 shaft for two years. I switched to a 314. I switched back to a skinny shaft and then I switched back to a 12.5 millimeter. At no time did I feel that one was more accurate than the other or produced more spin than the other. Again, visually they look a little different. Visually when you get out to the edges of the cue ball, it looks like you have a little more room with the thinner shaft and you do but the part of the tip that's hitting the cue ball is still the same and the cue ball only cares about the part of the tip that's hitting the cue ball so if i'm using maximum right english i'm hitting the cue ball with the left part of my tip and i can only go so far until it slips right off the ball so same thing with follow draw whatever so again with the thinner shaft it's going to look like i can get a little more a little farther out there but it's really all about the actual part of the tip that's hitting the cue ball, not the center of the tip or the outside of the tip that looks like it's way out there sometimes. So anyways, that's kind of my public service announcement to sort of prove that very unscientifically. I'm gonna play these racks with about five or six different cues that I've assembled. Uh, some are mine, some are uh, a friend's. And um, just kind of, kind of show you that I'm not gonna really be thinking about the cue too much. I, and, and therefore the power difference, the spin difference, whatever, I don't think is gonna come into play at all. Uh, based on what I've experienced over the years. Um, again, I may miss a couple shots because I miss. Uh, I may miss a couple shots because I'm talking while I'm doing it. And, um, you know, but, but those are all normal things that are going to happen in like this live type environment. If I wanted to do this for the next three hours, I'm sure I could put together a nice run of uh, five or seven racks and use a bunch of different cues and look perfect. But I want to do this in a live setting and just kind of talk through it and even talk through if I miss, you know, why I miss because I think that's informative for most players as well. Uh, watching somebody do a, a video where they make everything is not as informative as, uh, to me at least, as watching sometimes the, the misses as well and, and why did that person miss or, uh, you know, because that, that, that's going to affect, uh, that's going to have more of, you'll be able to relate to that a little bit more than, than watching somebody just play perfect cool, uh, although it's fun to do that too. So anyways, I'm going to get started. This is my personal cue. I'm going to start with Predator Panthera 3.2. It is uh, made by Jacoby, so it's probably 90% Jacoby made and uh, got 10% maybe where some Predator weight bowl technology and other things in it. Uh, I pair that up. It's a radio pan. I pair that up with 12.4 uh, millimeter Revo, which I've had for a couple years now. Um, I actually prefer, uh, don't tell Predator, but I actually prefer my old uh, shaft that I used to use uh, as far as feel goes. But this shaft performs just as well. Um, and I have it tuned where I've got one that doesn't, uh, you know, it sounds good, it feels decent, but I really like the ding resistance of it. Uh, and it feels as smooth as the day that I bought it, which was probably two and a half years ago. Uh, I could not say that for my old wood shaft, which constantly was having to be maintained and uh, waxed and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I've got a victory soft tip on this right now. Uh, I use, I've probably tried six or eight different tips on it. Uh, again, at no point did I have to change my game because I had a different tip, but uh, some of the tips just wore out and some of them I didn't like and cut them off and tried something else. So anyways, I'm going to get started. Okay, 
So in getting from the one to the two, the six is a little bit in my way, um, and I really want to be kind of like over here for the two. So I'm probably just going to play like a real simple kind of three rail shot and just kind of come out this way. So I'm going to use a little bit of a uh, little bit of follow, you know, rolling ball, and uh, a little bit of left English, probably like a half a tip. And I got I have ball in hand, so I can you know set my angle the way I want it. Um, so just enough left to kind of turn that cue ball up into the rail a little bit more. So I under hit that a little bit. So I'm gonna have to navigate a little bit of traffic. Um, I like there's a little window right here for the three. Um, otherwise I could come all the way back over here for the three. Um, or even try to get underneath the five and nine and get over here for the three. So looks like the angle I have, I think I can sneak between the five, nine and the four. Uh, so I'm gonna try to do that. So this will be just a straight follow shot, probably about a tip above center. Now I've got this, it's trying to look for an open zone right here. So again, on shots like this, you have some choices, right? I could hit this with straight follow. Uh, if I feel I need a little bit of left English to help open up the angle, if I feel I need a little bit of right English to kind of narrow the angle a little bit, I'll, I'll kind of do that. But when I'm looking at the shot right here, it looks like kind of a, a straight follow shot's gonna work. And so I just focus on my speed. So this one's a little tricky. I don't think the five goes over there. So I'm gonna have to play the five up here. So again, uh, I look like I'm gonna run into the ball. So I'm gonna hit this with a high ball. It's hard to see from this angle, but the tangent line's coming this way. That follow might get me a little close to this. So I may just put a hair of left English on this just to try to get like kind of probably right about in this area. pretty good, especially I haven't been playing too much, so that's good. All right, so I'll step away from the camera a little bit, sorry. So this one, again, just keep it simple, make the ball. I like to get a little closer to the six, but the exact angle I get is not that big of a deal. Even if I get straight in, I can draw back for the eight. So I don't know how pros think through this shot. I really have never discussed some of these detailed topics with a uh, bunch of the guys that I know, but I personally don't worry so much about where I get on the six on a shot like this because I know I can go two rails that way, two rails that way, one rail that way, whatever, and get on the eight. So uh, maybe they have a little bit better of a plan in mind, but I try to just focus on making the ball. You'll hear a lot of the commentators talk about, you know, if you get close to the ball, you have a lot of options, right? So if I can stay foot and a half to two and a half, you know, feet, maybe three feet from the ball, um, I can do a lot with the cue ball very accurately from that distance. If you start landing four and five feet away from the cue ball, yeah, you can hit a recovery shot and yes, you can use some spin and move the ball around or whatever, but that's where the errors start to creep in. So uh, just something to think about. Well, this one's a little bit touchy. So I don't want to come back and sort of hit the eight, hit the nine, or come behind the nine. But playing down on this side might also be a little tough because if I come down this way and you know I come out, so I'm probably going to try to come across and maybe try to come right at the nine. Um, I have to kind of think about this for a minute. This is one of those things where I might 
all of us might rush this a little bit while we're playing. And, uh, you know, if you take just a minute, I don't condone playing slow, and I don't want you to play slow. If you're naturally a, a slower, more methodical player, that's fine. But don't try to play fast just because you're trying to emulate some of the very naturally fast players out there. If you have to take a minute, not really a minute, let's say if you have to take 15 or 20 seconds, think about something, then, then do it, and then get down and execute the shot uh, rather quickly. Okay, so you can see there was a little bit of danger there. Uh, I felt my speed control was going to be good, but if I if I got a little too close to the nine there, you know, there's a chance to get hooked, and uh, you didn't want to do that. So this is a little bit of a touchy shot here too. Um, I could come two rails out. I could go forward with some reverse English and come back out to the nine. I could draw this over to the rail and back out. Uh, I think I'm going to get the draw option. Uh, the draw option is a little bit more precise, I think, than hitting the high left. Uh, because the left English, you never know. Sometimes it could deflect a little differently on you than you think. And I actually have an angle going pretty far away. So I have to hit it soft and get it to turn pretty quick with some left. So I'm just going to hit uh, probably a tip of draw and just sort of draw it out to the rail and back out. hit that very well, but still have a nice shot up in the corner. Okay, sorry for my uh, back being to you, but uh, again, I want to do this in a live manner, and uh, Try to see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab a different cue now. So I've got five or six over here. So the next cue I'm going to use, this is a Predator 8K4. I bought it because I like turquoise and uh, I've always liked this cue and I got a good deal on one finally. Um, I really have never even played with it, <laughs> just kind of bought it and put it in the closet, which is kind of silly. Um, it's paired with a 314.3, which I've never played with the 314.3 in competition. I did own a 314.2 for a while and played with that for a couple of years. Um, but again, I just kept the original shaft with the cue and pulled it out of my kind of one of my uh, storage cases just for this occasion. So I'm going to go ahead now and, and play with this cue. And again, in my opinion, this wooden shaft, these 314 type shafts or the Z type shafts, there's some subtle differences in, in versus the Revo, and the Revo's probably got a little less deflection, but it's not a material amount. It's not like 100% more. So I can use a lot of the same spin techniques that I use on this shaft that I do with the Revo. Bad. I haven't been playing very much, and uh, even with using this uh, AccuRack, I can tell I'm not hitting the balls properly because I'm not really making it. I almost made the corner ball, but not really making it too well. <laughs> so, um, I have a couple choices here. I could play above the two, but if I get a little bit on the wrong side of it, it could be tough to get up to the three. So, I kind of like coming down and, and playing on for the side, but the other problem with that is if I get a little short of the side, now I've got to fly the cue ball around the table to get back up on the three. So kind of have to weigh those decisions and figure out kind of what you want to do. Um, you know, for me personally, if I'm looking at this, I always prefer a rolling ball over having to hit a, uh, like a draw shot. So if I can roll this into the side, I feel like I can roll the ball pretty close to the angle I need uh, to get kind of back up on the three. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Wow, 
I must have flinched a little. <laughs> All right, just for purposes of the video. And one of the things I was about to say, and I was thinking it while I was shooting, so it's interesting, is I was jacked up over the three a little bit. And uh, I actually allowed myself to kind of hit the ball a little funky because of that. So I'm going to do that again. It's kind of funny, I had that little thought come in my head, and I don't know, maybe other people out there don't suffer from this like I do, but I had that little thought of doubt that came in my head, especially because I'm filming live, and I said, like, oh, don't miss this, and it's kind of funny, it's exactly what I did. Uh, so anyways, for here, I just want to get up a little bit higher for the three so I don't have such a, a big angle, so no spin on this, I'm just going to draw this kind of straight up. got a little too straight on it and frozen to the rail. So I'm going to have to try to get this out of there around the eight um, with a little bit of follow. Okay, so not ideal, but I was actually going to say again, it's really hard to shoot, especially when you're talking, but I was going to say one of the mistakes I make sometimes is I try to get a little too close to the ball and you don't realize if you don't walk around to the table and walk around to that side, you won't realize that getting a little closer is going to bring you a little too straight. And sometimes having that straight angle, then you've got to force the ball to do something. Where if I would have just drawn it back, like, say, six inches, take a little longer shot, but would have led me to the four a little easier. And when I'm playing my best, you know, those things I do. But I notice when I haven't been playing much really since before Christmas, uh, I've, I've probably played 20% as much as I usually do. I'm maybe playing, you know, once or maybe twice a week and no practice, so um, those things come into play for sure. So I could try to come off the inside of the four here and, and run into the five, which I don't really like, or I can just try to hit the four into the five. Um, the danger is gonna be, I, I don't know what's gonna happen, so if I kind of plot this out, I think I can hit the inside of the nine or the top of the nine. So I'm just gonna try to push that four down toward the corner softly. So now again, I'm thinking, my first thought is usually center of the table, right? What does that get me? So that's a good spot to be in right here. I can play that six. You know the eight's a little bit in the way, but I could get around it and come two rails down and play the seven, nine. Um, the other thing is if I get on this side of the six, I can kind of draw down or do something too. So I think I'm just going to try to land round center table. So for this, I use a little bit of left English just to help open the angle up a little bit. Although it wouldn't be strictly necessary if you used uh, a little more draw, but I like to roll the ball. Okay, so I got pretty good where I wanted to get. So now I can get here. Uh, and again, if I landed in the center, I, I could go two rails, but I got exactly where I wanted to be where I can now just kind of float down this way. So this is going to be just coming right down the tangent line with just a little below center. Couple technique, techniques you can use for combinations. Um, this is a very easy one. Should not miss this, hopefully. But um, you know, people will look at the first ball. I like to look at the first ball and, and kind of aim the second ball almost like this is the cue ball. And then from there, you can pick either a ghost ball type or a ghost point type of thing to aim at. Uh, you can pick a spot on the ball. Some people will pick a spot on the rail to aim at. Uh, some people will shoot the object ball into a spot almost as if the other ball is not there. Again, whatever visually works for you is fine. In this case, I know if I just make the seven, the nine is going to go in. So I just, this one's easy. I can just focus on making the seven. So one thing I can talk about here while I'm racking the balls again is that whole mental part of the game. And again, I'm such a perfectionist 
myself, that I notice the less I play, the less confidence I have. And the more I tinker with different things, which I tend to do, whether it be an aiming system or helping a student with something or whatever, again, the less confidence I have. So confidence plays a big part in it. Uh, if I was playing 20 or 30 hours a week and playing a bunch of tournaments and, and competing and gambling and all that stuff, a lot of these shots that I may miss sometimes, I, I, I feel very strongly that I would not miss them. And I've been told that by all the other guys that I kind of play against. But for me, I get in my own head and I doubt myself. And um, being jacked up over a ball like that, for me, I have this running movie that goes through and I can re like instantly recall all the freaking, you know, hundreds of times I've missed a stupid shot like that instead of the thousands of times I've made it properly. So that's just kind of my, my own, uh, you know, demon, if you will, that I have to conquer. And uh, again, if I played more, um, you know, I'm a solid A or double A player, but um, you still have to compete to get that confidence level up where you're just not thinking about anything. Uh, and it's also harder when you're talking and explaining and all that too. But, um, you know, the pros have a way of just lasering in on that shot and they don't, uh, they don't doubt themselves at all. But uh, again, you even see them when they get under a lot of duress or there's a big moment. We've seen famously a number of players kind of fall apart in the World Pool Tournament or the US Open or the Moscone Cup. So it happens to them too, it just happens much less. Anyways, switched cues. I'm gonna play the next track with uh, my friend's cue. This is actually one of the first cues that came out with the Revo. This is a SP1 or SP2, I can't remember, with the mustard and gold. And uh, this has a Unilock joint, I believe, yes. And a 12.9 Revo. Uh, for anyone out there considering the difference, I will say from my own experience that the 12.9 and the 12.4 play very similar as far as deflection goes. 12.4 may have a hair less. But it comes down to feel in the hand comes down to visualization on the cue ball. The 12.9 is going to appear thicker on the cue ball versus uh, the 12.4. And the sound, uh, I mean, they sound a little different. And even the same shaft sometimes, you get two or three of them, they might be slightly different weights, different amounts of filling, like the foam that's inside. It may just resonate and sound a little different. So um, all those factors come into helping you decide what shaft feels good for you and what plays good. So, all right, go ahead on to rack three and uh, shoot with this cue. Miss that ball again. Okay, so again, nice shot on the one. I just want to Get a little closer to the two, uh, and ideally not straight in because I, I really want to come off the rail and get a little bit better angle on the three. Um, so I'm really just going to kind of come come back uh, a little bit. I don't want to try to set myself up where I'm coming down this line, and I also don't want to be like over here. So I just really want to drift a little bit closer and give myself a little bit angle on the two. So again, I gotta have a little angle here because um, I really want to sneak maybe past the six and come over there for the four. So I may take a, normally in a game, I'd probably take a peek at this just to see what I'm looking at. But you know, this line seems pretty good right here. So I'm gonna use a low, you know, low, uh, a little bit of draw, pull it back toward me. And I may use a little bit of right English to uh, I uh, really don't need it on this shot. Sometimes people will use a little bit of right English to kind of come this way a little more when it hits the rail, but I really don't want to be this way too much. So I think just straight draw here is going to going to work out just fine. Okay, so I got good on that. So again, when I come around this six, I want to look at this three, look at the tangent line. It's going to be dangerously close to the six, um, but I think I can get around that six, and then I'll, I'll use a little bit of right English to open up that angle and come up 
kind of in this area. Now, I don't want to get straight on this, but because I was focusing on getting around the six, that's exactly what happened uh, again. Um, because I was focused on one thing, I didn't focus on my speed as much. Uh, normally I would have really focused more on being like here. But I'm going to accept what I got and I'm going to have to draw back and draw back to a point where I feel comfortable making a six. So I may try to draw back about, maybe about where I am. accepted that position. So now I can hit this and I could go three rails around the table and I could come you know, two rails across. All those things I think are fraught with a little more danger. Uh, if I come across this way to side pockets in play, if I try to you know, do the two rail route, if I try to go three rails, you know, the spin and all the deflection compensations come into play. So I think I can hit this with a draw stroke and a little bit of right English and hit it kind of uh, smooth and come off the rail and try to avoid the side pocket and just kind of play almost right back where I'm at. trying to guard against this, I actually just stroked it a little smoother than I anticipated. So I could try to fly around the table, but honestly I'm just going to kind of accept what I can get. So I'm going to try to make the seven. I'll use a little bit of a high ball, a little bit of right English, and I'm going to try to come like back out in here somewhere, maybe down by the side pocket, and just give myself a decent cut on the eight so I can go kind of up and down the table. Some part, sometimes playing pool is accepting uh, the positions that you get into when your speed is off or maybe the balls lie uh, a little difficult. So that could be one shot where I may have missed because of the extra different shaft, uh, especially when I'm on the rail. You get a little more curve than you do get deflection because you're elevated a little more. So that could have been uh, an issue there, possibly. It also could have just been focus or thinking about it a little too much. Sometimes if you just let your game flow a little bit, it's better. So I'm just going to try to make this, and I'm just going to try to come straight down the rail and back out again. Uh, so I'm going to use just a touch of inside English, but I don't need a lot because if I use too much, I'm going to scratch. So it's really just a, a rolling cue ball and focus on speed. So a shot like this, uh, I covered this in one of the videos I think I have yet to post, but it will be posted soon. And I talk about this exact type of shot. So these types of shots come up a lot, where the nine ball is near the spot, and you end up getting above it like this with a little bit of an angle. And so you have to practice those, number one, and, and get used to shooting these 40 to 50 to 60 degree shots. And secondly, you gotta figure out what you're gonna do with the cue ball. So a lot of times you see people bust this like kind of two rail out of the corner, but on this angle, if I get this too much of a stun shot, I'm going to come dangerously close to that. So I like just hitting this with a high ball, no English, kind of come here, here, and kind of right here, back up into my little golden zone that I talk about in my next video. So I want to be right, right in this area. So I'm just going to hit this uh, with a high ball. Not bad again. I had a feeling I was going to make a few mistakes today, but uh, like I said, I may, even though I'm a decent player, 
if I sit here and try to do six racks in a row of goes to not make any mistakes at all, uh, you know, just being honest, could be here for a little while. So, I usually, when I'm playing the ghost, I usually, uh, when I'm playing the nine ball ghost, I'm usually about two to one. So that means for every two games I win, I usually lose a game. So if I'm playing a race to nine against the ghost and nine ball, I'm usually, I usually win about nine to three or nine to four, somewhere around that, maybe nine to five. Um, if I'm playing really well, it could be 9-0, 9-1, 9-2. 9-0 is pretty tough, but 9-1, 9-2. Um, I've done that a number of times. Uh, and if I'm playing a little off, I, it may get close. I could, I might still win, but it could be 9-6, 9-7, 9-8. And there's times I lose playing the Ghost. I just don't play enough right now where if, if I, when I do that kind of practice, um, you know, breaking a little off, whatever. Using the magic rack or the accurate rack, it's much easier. Balls tend to spread a little bit better. But if I'm using a wooden rack, especially, sometimes you might get clusters and things too you have to worry about and, and whatever. Um, I also usually challenge myself. For me, when I play the ghost and nine ball, I usually, out of nine racks, for when I used to do this more um, regularly, I try to get three out of the nine racks where I do not take ball in hand. Uh, if you want to be really tough on yourself, you don't take ball in hand on any of the racks, and that's really tough. But again, with enough practice on your break, getting the speed and everything down, that is quite doable for a for an A or double A player. Um, but that's something you kind of see the pros able to do a little more. Uh, ten ball playing the ghost, I'm usually about 50-50. So usually, if I'm playing a race to nine and ten ball, um, scores are going to be pretty close. Like it, it could be nine to eight, nine to seven, nine to six if I win. Um, and, and I will lose far more often because of that 50-50 range. But that's something I could work on a little bit more. Um, part of it's the break, part of it's just that extra ball adds that extra little bit of traffic. There's, there's a lot more racks you play where you're having to run all 10 balls or nine or eight balls, where when you're playing nine ball, if you break well, a lot of times your racks are, are seven balls or eight balls. So, uh, and there's just less traffic on the table. So anyways, next queue up. And I can see this tip's a little mushroomed, but we're gonna deal with it. Um, this is my old Sean playing cue. It's a limited edition. Um, they only made a couple of them to my knowledge. It's from 1991 or 92. It's got a nice elephant ear wrap on it, all the good stuff in the middle. Um, this is paired up right now with the Mez WX700 shaft. That's uh, 12 and a half millimeters. And I cannot even tell you what kind of tip is on this. It looks like it might be an Everest and it's a little bit mushroomed. So. Um, we can see how this goes. And I'm definitely not practicing myself good or not really good. All right, so ball spread out decently. Tricky shot on the two, I just really just kind of avoid getting left on the three. So I don't want to be too far over here. I really just want to be kind of right on in this area. And something to think about, let's just say I look right here and that's where I want to get. If I put myself here, I, I don't even have a shot. I can't reach it properly. So something to think about that maybe you want to be like down here instead. Um, a little bit of a tricky shot, but I may actually come around the six because I want to be able to reach uh, reach the shot. So I'm just going to hit this with a high ball, or I should say a rolling ball. It's not really a follow shot. I like in a, a rolling cue ball, sort of like an underhand toss in softball or baseball, right? It's very controllable to take to take your hand and kind of just toss a ball to somebody across the room or whatever, where if you start to do all of this, um, you have to have good timing with that, right? And good technique where most people can toss a ball at somebody and it's just an easy motion. So to me, hitting a, a rolling ball in pool is like that. And you see a lot of the pros, if their patterns are tight and the balls allow for it, they're going to use the rolling ball uh, with maybe little bits of right or left English a lot. Um, it's just a very accurate way of doing it. You can kind of maintain that three or four to ten speed, and uh, you know your muscles just it keeps them out of out of the out of the way. So I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of a kind of a stun stroke. Just come this way and come back this way on a three. Uh, I would like a little angle. I'd like to be maybe here, 
but I'm not going to stress too much if I get straight in. I don't really want to beat down here too much, so I'm probably just going to try to stay over in this area. So just a nice draw stroke. And I'm saying draw, it's really more of a stun. Yeah, perfect right there. So again, I want to come down toward the four, and I don't really want to be straight, but again, if I get close to the four, I have a lot of options. So I really like to be maybe like right over here on this type of an angle. Nice 10 to 20 degree angle would usually suffice for a lot of shots. So this is going to be again just a stun shot and just speed. Okay, so that's ideal. So now again, when I come up here on the five, I don't really care too much if I'm a little this way or a little this way. I just don't want a big angle on the five because I want to, I'm so close to the six. I just want to get kind of close to it. Now, one thing to notice, if you look where the cue ball is right now, other than being a little bit over the nine, it's kind of right where I'd like to be. So anytime you see the cue ball starting in a position where you'd like to end, it gives you a nice target. So I always look for a couple targets when I'm playing pool. One is the center of the table and, if, and sometimes even the center axis, right? So kind of a cross. So maybe I want to be center, but I want to be center right or center left or you know, so I can, I can modify that a little bit based on, again, doing a bunch of drills and learning how to get to the center of the table. My second target is going to be the spot. So a lot of times there's only a spot on the foot part of the table, but sometimes when you have these shots in the side pockets, if you see that getting to the spot will allow you to hit the ball at a proper angle, then that spot gives you a nice visual reference. And I think the third big frame of reference uh, is going to be the cue ball itself. So again, many times you're going to have a shot like this where if you can pull the cue ball back to where it started, you know you're in pretty good shape. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. So I'm going to hit uh, a little bit of draw and have a little bit of right English on this so that it opens it back up a little bit more so I get a little closer to the five. Maybe it a little bit, but it's not bad. So I could shoot the six on the side, but I don't didn't really because I babied that ball a little bit. Um, and that was just me. So I think I'm gonna go around the six and try to come back out to center table. So this is kind of a standard shot. You look at the shot, you see the to follow kind of the 30 degree principle which I've talked about before and then when I see where the cue ball is going to hit I know I'm going to need a little bit of right English to get back to the center. I could also just play follow and just come straight down here on the short side of the six but if I get a little funny it, it might be tough so I think I'm just going to use this with uh, follow and a little bit of right English. So again, not to make a big deal about this, and this is my old playing cue, I haven't played with it in three years, however, I hit that with high right, nice rolling ball, made the same type of compensation that I would with my Rebo shot that I play with every day, and I made the ball just fine and got just fine where I was looking for the cue ball. And I'm not suggesting that you won't, that you're going to play exactly the same with a different shaft or tip, because you do have to get used to your personal shaft, but again, the differences are just not as big as people make them out to be. So when you're really playing in gear, you probably just draw back for this, but it doesn't hurt if you want to come up here and just take a quick look. So if you see kind of, maybe you prefer to draw back, you know, to get straight in. That way you can visually see, okay, I need to come back like six inches, something like that. So from here, it's just all about not doing something silly. So this is going to be a stun shot. I'm just going to go out to the rail and back out a couple inches so that I'm not uh, hampered by the rail.
So again, I hope this is helpful for you guys. Uh, again, sorry for having my back turned. Um, maybe next time I will put the camera on the other side. But uh, I hope this is helpful for you guys. If it is, please you know make comments on the video. Let me know, and I can do more of these in the future. Maybe just a few racks at a time to keep the video shorter. But uh, again, if you find it helpful to kind of hear kind of what my thinking is or what the thinking of a better player is. Uh, again, I don't have all the answers and, and I may, you know, I'm more than willing if uh, somebody says, hey, why don't you do this instead of this? And if I think about it and it makes sense, you know, I'll, I'll change the way I approach that shot. And, you know, to me doing drills over the years and, and watching all the videos and people play that I have, you, you build your own kind of framework of how you want to play. And, um, you know, sometimes you got to make little adjustments to that or sometimes you learn something new and you see a different way to do something and you kind of mix that in, you know, mix that in. But I try to keep things pretty simple. Uh, if I'm playing my best, it is simple. And um, I'm not one. I can, I can stroke the ball with the best of them and use a bunch of power and a crap load of spin, especially from playing three cushion. I think I can spin the ball as much as anybody I know, uh, short of some of the trick shot artists. But... Um, I try to reserve that for exhibitions and showing off and not uh, not actually playing in a real game. So, all right, I'm gonna to switch to my next cue. Uh, this one should be interesting. <laughs> um, this is a Q-Tech Synergy, uh, one of the Shane Van Boning Dakota editions of matching everything. Um, I've actually only played with this for about five or 10 minutes. I'm selling it to a friend of mine. And um, I've actually put the extension on this too. And I never even hit with this with the extension before. I don't really prefer the extensions. I don't like the extra weight. So this cue right now probably weighs like 21 or 22 ounces. It's definitely not, it feels very heavy to me right now. Uh, this has the Synergy shaft, which is uh, 12 and a half millimeters, I believe. And I'm not even sure what kind of tip they pair this with. So again, I'm just gonna try to play a rack with this and see, see what happens. In general, I've had some decent feedback I've heard on the on the Q Tech cues. Um, you know, it's not something I play with right now, but uh, I could play with I think if I if I needed to, or, or wanted to. But um, uh, I do lose my favorite colors, so I like the look of it. Definitely feels weird with the uh, extension on the back, but. I'm going to move this a little bit because, uh, well, I'm going to try to dislodge the cluster, but for purposes of this video, if I don't do it, uh, I could also play for the bank too. I guess I'll do that. That's probably what I would do if it was in a game. So uh, anyways, uh, if I'm going to do that, right, I want to try to look at this bank shot and I'm going to want to try to just get pretty straight in on the bank and just draw back a little for the four. So I kind of look at my little two to one line. Right, so if I'm coming from, from 14, let's say, right here, and the way I'm counting this is from the side pocket, right? So this is zero, 10, and then about every inch is another one. So this will build like 14, just shy of the halfway mark. And if I go to seven, uh, it's a little bit off that line. So this is probably more like a 12 to six bank. Uh, so I really wanna be kind of right about here, maybe a little bit on that side. So again, I'm gonna try to roll up to that spot by hitting this into the side pocket. Okay, so I got pretty good. Uh, so now I'm just gonna try to bank the ball, a little bit of draw, and just try to come out just a few inches for the four. So on a shot like this, when the five's in the corner, you know, just don't do anything silly. Um, sometimes you have to be below it. Sometimes you have to be like on this rail, sort of have the right angle. But a lot of times, as long as you're not dead straight on it, you can maneuver the cue ball around a lot. So I'm looking at this, the six ball's blocked by the eight. It looks like there's like half of a pocket, but not enough for me to feel comfortable. So I really want to be kind of either over here for the six or shooting it kind of up here. So I think when I play this five ball, I would like to be underneath it or sort of even maybe right here. 
So I think I'm gonna to try to stay kind of down on that side. So I'm just gonna hit this kind of soft. This is where the extension actually uh, comes in handy. I have one that I put on my cue for situations like this. It came a little far. I was also talking while I was down there. <laughs> so um, I can cut the five a little bit more into the left part of the pocket which will allow me to hit this rail. So I think I'm gonna shoot this and just sort of come up. I'll use a little bit of right English on the cue ball. Um, and I'm really just trying to come down this line. So it's a little touchy because I'm coming across the line and it's gonna definitely be a speed shot. So I just wanna be kind of anywhere in here. And I'm gonna be shooting this left-handed, so that'll make it a little more interesting. So predictably a little bit short. Um, uh, this is kind of tough now. So I'm going to try to cut this in the right corner and try to come around that eight ball and uh, maybe try to get down here for the seven. Uh, normally if I was playing in a game, I would just play safe. Uh, it's not really worth the risk of trying a difficult shot or trying to bank or something like that. Um, I guess for purposes of this video, what I'll do is maybe I'll just try to bank the ball. I actually think the bank shot, even though it's on a diamond table and you got to hit it pretty precise. Uh, if you have a newer, newer cloth on a diamond table, the ball slides off the rail, so it makes the pocket a little bigger. This table's pretty well worn in, so the ball has to go in pretty clean. But I still think that's probably easier than trying like, to use low right English and zip around. I might hit the eight. So I'm going to try to bank it down here, and if I miss, then I'll just leave it where it is. So I'm going to use low right on this, just because I want to try to help throw the six in a little bit and uh, move the cue ball over to the ground. Not too shabby. All right, so again, this eight ball, I just want to get out enough so that I don't leave myself too much of an angle on the eight. So nothing crazy here, just make the ball and kind of let the cue ball float over a little bit and maybe I'll put a little bit of draw on it so it gets just a little bit closer, but really this middle line of the table is, is perfectly fine. So I got a little thin, just a little bit thin on the 8. I should have looked at it uh, before I shot it. It's not bad. But for me to try to slow spin this, especially with something I'm not familiar with, and try to come over here for the 9 might be a little touchy. So I'm going to play this 4 rails. I'm going to come 1, 2, try to come down in here, 3, 4, and then back out for the 9. I should be able to, uh, to do that. We'll see. So a little bit of an adventure on the last couple shots. And again, that was all a cause of actually, uh, I got a little funny on the five, and then I got a little funny on the six. So a lot of these things, they, they sort of just keep, you know, building on each other. Uh, now I did make a great shot on the six to where I recovered very well, but when I hit that seven, I hit it a little tentative. I should have punched it a little more and made sure I got out. I was even talking about it. So again, Without talking while I'm playing, sometimes those things just intuitively happen, and sometimes you have to kind of make them happen a little bit. So, anyways, I do have a shot of the nine, so I'm just going to concentrate on this and try to make this up in the side. So way more excitement than I normally would <laughs> would like in my games, but uh, and the way I play, I, I even though I sort of would win that game, I uh, I would be disappointed in myself that I got on the line. Uh, there's a lot of players I know, even some good players that 
they seem to enjoy that type of thing, even like making those tough shots and uh, not really showing off per se, but sort of letting their stroke out and, and uh, getting out of trouble. And uh, I'm kind of more of the player that I don't want to get in trouble in the first place. I'm, I'm a very precise person with everything I do, and we all make mistakes. We can't be perfect, but I certainly do my best to try to get there. And, uh, and that's even with playing five or six hours a week. So obviously, if I played you know, 40 hours a week, I could actually achieve that a little bit more often. But a lot of times, it's just simple mental mistakes. Like I said, I hit that ball. I babied it a little bit, so it got away from me. Uh, like I said, you just keep compounding the errors. So it's a good lesson for everybody, too. So, uh, and actually this cue, even though it was a little heavy, um, it actually hit through the ball real nice. I kind of liked it, to be honest. Last cue I'm gonna play with, last rack. Uh, this is an old P3 butt uh, that my friend had laying around and um, I'm pairing this up with the Z2 shaft that I also found. I have not used the Z2 shaft probably since 2008 or 2009. Um, I just went away from that thinner shaft. I got back to it again, maybe around 2011 or 12 for about six months to a year. And then ever since then, I've kind of stuck with uh, more of a 12, four, 12, five millimeter. Um, but uh, anyways, hopefully this is good and we'll see how this works out. So maybe I'll have to play with the Z shaft again. It was the best break I had. Um, so there's a school of thought where maybe coming back down here for the four, playing in the side is good. But honestly, I remember one of the things Danny DiLiberto always says when he commentates, and he says a lot of the same things kind of over and over. So it's stuck in my head. But I think one of the things he says is something like, if you have, if you have position, don't try to get position, right? So if I'm going to shoot that five, the three up in the corner and just shoot the four down here in this corner, I mean, I don't have to move the cue ball around a lot. I don't have to do anything. So that's probably what I would do. So I'm just going to set myself up here and uh, maybe, and really I just want to leave the cue ball almost on the same angle because uh, I don't want to be straight on the four. I want to be able to slide over from the four to get on the five. So in an effort to get just a little more over, I got myself kind of 50-50, which is silly. I should have just left the cue ball right here. Um, I don't know what I was, again, I'm just talking. So I'm probably gonna follow down now and try to play short side on the five because trying to punch this ball out, I may only be able to get out to like here or here, and then I gotta take a much bigger cut on the five. So I'm probably just gonna follow down and try to get speed and just try to get down there. And that was just a silly mental mistake on my part trying to get like the perfect angle when in reality if I just stayed on the inside of the ball I was perfectly fine. All right so again first target center table. Uh, I prefer to be on this side of the line so if my line is here I really want to be kind of on this side because if I get on this side, you know, I can't, I'm gonna run into the nine if I try to go two rails and um, otherwise I gotta draw out or whatever. So I'm really just trying to be about right here. So, um, and this shot lends very well for that. So I'm just gonna use a little bit above follow, uh, sorry, a little bit above center and just sort of try to float up in the position. And you'd rather come too far than not far enough on a shot like this. not bad. So for me personally on this shot, you can hit this soft and try to just float into position like right here, but you really bring a lot of collision induced throw into that and you have to account for that. Uh, some of the players are better than others at that. Like I noticed a lot of the snooker based or English eight ball based players, Jason Shaw, Chris Melling, Darren Appleton, they hit that shot really, really well. 
I would prefer to come back and forth a little bit. So I'm going to hit this with the high ball. And since I think the follow shot's going to bring me like kind of down into here, I'm going to put a little bit of right English on this so that I come flatten the ball out and come kind of straight across the table. So my target is to kind of hit this third diamond and bounce out just a little bit. So I got a little straight on this, but um, I got a decent angle, so when I hit this draw shot, it's going to naturally want to, here's my shot, here's this middle line, it's going to come back like over here. So again, it's just a speed shot, straight draw, no side spin, and just come down somewhere like over here uh, for position on the nine. should be okay. When I got down on the shot actually I felt like I was going to come a little close to the side pocket or be stuck on the rail so I kind of I'd rather have this shot than be stuck on the rail. Um, again this is one of those same shots I had before which is why I mentioned that you want to practice these types of shots from these types of areas uh, to a nine ball that's near the spot. Especially with a magic rack it tends to stay kind of in that middle. So again I'm just going to hit this Follow, maybe a hair of right English, but you really don't need it. And again, I'm gonna try to direct that cue ball up to this middle, uh, this middle spot. Okay, so that's my video. Again, wasn't perfect, I uh, hadn't been Really haven't been playing all that much since uh, probably a week or two before Christmas. But uh, I feel a little punchy in my stroke, probably not as smooth. I'm sure I'll see some things on camera myself that I'm not happy with. But uh, overall, I hope you saw that six different cues, uh, different random racks. Um, I, I didn't feel like at any point in time that I had to think in my head like, oh, I'm using the Z shaft now, I need to do this. Or I've got a carbon fiber shaft in my hand now, I need to do this. I think with every cue, I had shots where I overdid it or underdid it a little bit, and I had a lot of shots where I hit exactly the way I wanted to. So um, I think you can get used to anything. Uh, certain people are a little bit uh, easier to do that with than others, uh, have a little bit easier time uh, than others doing that. But um, I think in general it's good. Experiment with things, um, you know, find what you like, and, uh, and stick with it, and, and learn your shaft. So like when you have that four or five foot long shot with power and spin, you know what it's gonna do. Um, as far as the tip positioning goes, again, watch some of my other videos, watch my masterclass series, watch anyone else's videos that talks about uh, position play and, 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 and what English does, and learn how to bend the cue ball forward and backward from the tangent line, and learn how to use right or left English to open up your angles or, or shorten them up and then you can pick the best path and the highest percentage play. And, uh, and like I said, stick to the middle of the table. That's a really good spot to be. If you're not sure where to go, always look at that spot. And uh, it's going to be a good, good spot to hang out for a lot of shots that you have. So anyways, hope you enjoyed the videos. Uh, subscribe if you like it. Um, hit the like button if you like it. Leave me a comment. I try to get back to just about everybody if they ask me a question. Uh, so I appreciate it. And thanks for watching.